It is seven in the morning when my mother-in-law and I starting to prepare the things we have to bring for camping. It is my father-in-law's 68th birthday, and he wanted to relive his scouting years. So as a token of appreciation and to celebrate his lifelong dedication to the country, we decided to throw a birthday bash at one of his most unforgettable scouting camps. And surprisingly, it is also the place where my mother-in-law and he met. In short, we will also reminisce about their first encounter and interaction. I am so excited because I know that this weekend getaway will surely be memorable. As we were piling up the things and pieces of baggage on the porch, I gazed my eyes to my father-in-law and husband, who were checking the car one last time, so I decided to hand them their snacks. Come and have a break! You need all the energy for the long road ahead, I told them. My husband Daniel smiled at me and rushed to take his cupcake. How lovely it is to have such a thoughtful wife. Thank you for this. My father-in-law Dexter took a sip of his lemonade as well, but his eyes were still fixated on the car's engine. How was it? I asked. This is just about being curious, but this is also about our safety. The camping site is a four-hour drive from the city and the road ahead is very bumpy and there are many slopey ways. I just want us to have a safe trip. Uh, I have checked it on one of the best mechanics um, in town and um, he said it is uh, good to go. How reassured are you by his words? He is the best! My mother-in-law Anna butt in. My father-in-law looked at her and then at me. Yes, Anna is right. Charlie is a good lad and he is skilled in engines for his age. So I trust the guy. Besides, why wouldn't I? There is never a mechanic who wishes for his client to have a car accident. I gulped. The idea of a possible car accident has come to my mind. Oh dear, I hope it doesn't happen. And it was the mom who suggested that the guy should be our mechanic. And we all know mom's taste, she always knows what's right. I looked at my mother-in-law and I saw her getting giddy by what she heard as she typed something on her phone for someone. Hmm, um, I wonder who that is. Dad is right. We should trust the guy. There is no need to be afraid, my love. My husband reassured me by giving me the warmest kiss on the forehead. I smiled at him and he did the same to me. What are we waiting for? Let's go! So with that, the whole bunch proceeded to put the bags in the car and with no further ado, we headed to our destination. The first two hours of our road trip were fun and all about making memories. My husband was the one driving. I am so fortunate to have in-laws that are very kind and warm to me and I couldn't ask for more. Throughout the trip, I kept on noticing that my mother-in-law was so busy with her phone and she kept on giggling. And as soon as we reached the boundary town from our place to our destination, I couldn't help but notice her being uneasy. She kept on circling her head, looking from left to right as if any time something would happen. This one is an epic road trip, one for the books. As we continue to sing along and have fun, I never thought our family trip would at any time take such a dark turn. Or am I speaking too soon? We stopped by a gas station to refuel and get some snacks while my mother-in-law was using the restroom. It's been 15 minutes and she was still inside so I decided to check on her. But as I was about to knock on the restroom door, I heard her talking to someone on the phone. Yes, yes, I will. I'm sure that I am safe at the back. Don't worry. Everything is going smoothly as we planned. I raised an eyebrow as I heard her say those words. What does she mean? Yes, yes, it's, it's all falling into place. The accident will happen as planned. We need to ensure everything appears like a random event. My eyes widened in shock, my heart pounding in my chest. 
Once the chaos ensues, we'll make our escape. Hawaii will be the perfect destination to start a new life together. Oh God, I can't wait enough to leave this wretched life. I hate my husband so much and his nonsense behavior. I also hate my daughter-in-law. Her smile and fake kindness irritate me and she is influencing my son into her pretentious behavior. I don't care about them anymore. I just want to be with you, babe. My grip tightens on my phone as I tried my best to record everything audibly. I could feel my breath catching in my throat. Remember, make it look like a regular car accident. No suspicions. We can't afford to make any mistakes. My mind raced, connecting the dots, realizing the extent of the betrayal. She... she she wants us to be involved in a car accident? She's a monster. And she is having an affair? Your company car will be the ticket to freedom. No one will suspect a thing. Just ensure it's prepared and ready for our getaway. My anger intensified and my grip turned into a clenched fist. Oh, my son and his wife will never suspect a thing. They're too caught up in their own lives to notice the truth. And on top of that, they're stupid to know. As soon as I heard her getting ready to get out, I moved a few meters away so that she wouldn't suspect a thing. I composed myself as I took a deep breath. She got out of the cubicle and saw me a few meters away from her. Did you wait here for a long time? She asked nervously. Uh, no, I just wanted to check with you. It's been 30 minutes. Let's go. She nodded. As I turned away, my mind raced with thoughts of how to unravel the web of deceit and protect my family from Anna's treachery. I tried to tell my husband and father-in-law to wear their seatbelts properly and to watch out for some dangers while driving. But my mother-in-law kept on butting in. Why is she so cruel? I couldn't help it anymore. I want to tell them the truth before anything happened. A loud impact crashed on us. I could feel the car rolling and my husband shouting for our names. My vision became blurry and I could hear my father-in-law screams. And just before anything else could happen, I lost consciousness. When I finally regained consciousness, my head was throbbing and my body aching. The chaos of the aftermath surrounded me. Loud sirens from both the police and ambulance were all around. An unknown voice kept on asking me if I could hear them. And as soon as I opened my eyes, I saw a blurry vision of strangers looking down at me and one of them was checking my eyes and pulse. She's breathing! Stretcher, please! Four nurses came to rescue me and carried me to the stretcher. My mind was still in shock, but I remembered my husband and father-in-law. I looked around to search for them and saw their bodies lying on the ground and nurses tending them. Panic surged through my veins as I realized everything that happened, a car accident or just by my mother-in-law. I tried to look for her as the nurses were carrying me, but she was nowhere to be found. She had vanished, leaving behind a trail of questions and shattered trust. The next thing I remembered was that I was rushed to the emergency room. Nurses came to attend to me and checked on me, and after that, I lost my consciousness again. I opened my eyes once again and I found myself lying on the hospital bed. I looked beside me and I saw my husband sleeping, bandages and stitches all over his arms and legs, while on the other side of my bed was my father-in-law. My eyes were filled with shock as I saw his head bandaged and his left leg bandaged and hanged. I couldn't help but cry as I saw them both suffering. I remember the two of them sitting in front. This explains the impact of their injuries. I looked at my body and minimal signs of injuries were found, but my head was throbbing with pain and I saw a big bag of blood injected to me through an IV. I couldn't help but be angry at my mother-in-law, I swear, as soon as I recover, I will seek revenge. 
The door opened and the doctor talked to me about our conditions. I was lucky that I was able to survive the crash with minimal injuries but my body was very much in shock due to the heavy impact and that's why I have to rest. While my husband and father-in-law suffered the same fate, both of them were severely injured and must be kept in the hospital for complete recovery. I couldn't help but to cry and feel the sadness, betrayal and anger all at once. And before he left, he told me another thing. Uh, someone wants to talk with you, a witness of the accident. My heart pounded like crazy as he called on the witness. A woman in her mid-thirties came to me. Uh, I will leave you two then, I, I will be right back. The witness faced me with utmost concern and before she could retell the accident, she first asked about my condition and my family members and then proceeded to tell me the story. Her voice was trembling with shock as she recounted the unthinkable. She told me that the event was abrupt and everything happened so fast. My mother-in-law had run away with the man who had caused the accident. I covered my mouth out of shock. I knew she planned everything, but I didn't know that the guy she was talking to was the one who drove the car. My mind couldn't comprehend it at first. How could this happen? The truth unfolded before my eyes, and it appeared that they were not only having an affair, but they had orchestrated the entire accident to run away. And they want us dead just to be together. The witness showed me a picture of the guy and he was kind of familiar to me. Wait a minute. It was the guy from the mechanic shop, our car mechanic. This is impossible. He was so young and he ran away with my mother-in-law? No way. I am so determined to find my mother-in-law and confront her. Her evilness must not go unpunished. And with that, I tried my best to have my full recovery. I was discharged from the hospital, but I still have to take care of my injured husband and father-in-law. I didn't reveal to them the truth because I don't want them to stress out and they have already suffered enough. I will take revenge for them. So I embarked on an emotional roller coaster. Clues and rumors led me to a different city where they were rumored to have fled. My heart raced with a mix of concerns for my mother-in-law's well-being and fury at her betrayal. I tried to ask several people that will lead me to where they were, but there was no chance to have a clue until I realized I could review the recording. Your company car will be the ticket to freedom. No one will suspect a thing. Just ensure it's prepared and ready for our getaway. By hearing those words, a glimmer of hope emerged. I visited the mechanic shop and I discovered that the young man with his full intention had used his company's car. It was a chance for justice to be served. With desperation fueling my resolve, I reached out to the company layering bare the deceit and pleading for their assistance. The company owner was so furious, he was wondering where the car could have been and also Ethan, the mechanic, and to my surprise the company not only sympathized but extended their support wholeheartedly. They covered our medical expenses and offered to help track down my mother-in-law and the young man. They even enlisted legal aid to ensure that they face the consequences of their actions, both on us and their company. The company hired investigators and with their resources, we closed in on their location. A daring plan took shape, allowing us to confront them and bring them to justice. The company owner wanted the operation to be smooth and unsuspecting, so we posed as car dealers me and the company owner and lured them with a false promise of winning a car we wore a disguise costumes as soon as we arrived at their location i knocked on their front door and my mother-in-law opened the door her hair messy and her clothes just worn and the young man followed behind her and wrapped his arms around her waist the sight of it nearly threw me off Congratulations! You have won our grand prize, a brand new car! A car? 
But we didn't enter any contest. I smiled at her as genuinely as I could. Uh, that's what makes it even more exciting. You have been randomly selected as our lucky winners. Anna looked around, checking if someone was with us, but she saw no one. Ethan, her lover, responded us. This seems too good to be true. Are you sure it's not a scam? Absolutely not. We are a reputable dealership and this is our way of giving back to the community. I reassured them. My mother-in-law and her young man exchanged glances. Their curiosity piqued. I tried my best to control my temper. I want to drag them so badly the horrible things they did were flashing back in my mind. They have to be punished. My heart hurts every time I remember the faces of my husband and father-in-law and it was supposed to be his birthday. He's already old and he doesn't deserve this kind of cruelty while his wife is here living in sin. Ah, uh, well, if it's true, we could use a new car. She smiled flirtatiously at her lover. With composure, I led them towards the car. Stay right this way, your prize awaits you outside. Anna and Ethan cautiously approached the car, their excitement mixed with a hint of apprehension. As they reached the vehicle and opened the doors, the lights in the warehouse suddenly illuminated as it revealed the two police officers. The other authorities arrived swiftly, ensuring they were apprehended. The weight of their betrayal and deceit had finally caught up with them. Justice was served. Surprise, Anna! It's time to face the consequences of your actions! As I said those words, I removed the disguise as well as the company owner. My mother-in-law panicked as she saw me. Ella! What is this? Please let us go! We didn't mean any harm. It was a mistake. You betrayed your family, Mrs. Anna. They trusted you, and you, Ethan, I have mistaken you for a skilled and decent man. You're nothing but a criminal and a thief. You will surely rot in jail for adultery, attempted murder, and theft. The company owner instructed the officer, and they arrested them swiftly. You are both under arrest for your involvement in the premeditated accident and subsequent crimes. You have no evidence. That is not true. I threw to the ground the transcription of the recording and his picture captured by the witness as well as the injured photos of my husband and father-in-law. Let's see each other at court. Ella, I'm sorry. I never meant for things to end like this. My mother-in-law held the hem of my dress and kneeled. Have you lost your mind? You allowed a terrible thing to happen to us. Your son and husband were fighting for their lives. Even me, your daughter-in-law. You wanted us dead? Sorry. Won't change the pain, damage, and trauma you've caused. You'll face the consequences of your actions. The police officers handcuffed my mother-in-law and her young man, leading them away while I watched them with a mix of relief and sorrow. I want to go back to my family and tell them that justice has been served. In the aftermath of the ordeal, my family faced the difficult task of healing. Forgiveness wasn't easy, but it was a necessary step towards reclaiming our lives. Slowly we began to rebuild what was broken. The legal process ran its course, ensuring that Anna and Ethan faced the consequences of their actions. As soon as my father-in-law and husband recovered, we went to family therapy and I revealed to them everything. They couldn't believe it, but I assured them that justice has been served. Our family found solace in each other's support, determined to move forward and leave this painful chapter behind. Ultimately, this traumatic journey taught me the power of forgiveness and the strength of family bonds. I discovered that sometimes, even in the face of betrayal, redemption is possible. And though scars remain, we emerge stronger, united in our resilience and the unwavering love and loyalty we shared. With time, our family started the healing process. 
We leaned on one another, offering comfort and understanding amid our shared pain. My husband has fully recovered and stood by my side, his unwavering support and source of strength for me. Together, we nurtured my injured father-in-law back to health, ensuring he received the care and attention he needed. As the legal proceedings unfolded, we found solace in the knowledge that Anna and Ethan would face the consequences of their betrayal and will be convicted for several years. They were held accountable for their actions, not just for the physical harm they caused, but for the emotional devastation they inflicted upon our family. As the legal system worked its course, Anna and Ethan faced the full weight of their betrayal. The truth of their actions was laid bare, and justice prevailed. The courtroom served as a symbol of closure, a final chapter in this painful saga. With the legal battles behind us, our family turned towards the future. We embraced the opportunity to rebuild, to forge a stronger bond born from the fires of adversity. Each day became a step forward, a testament to our resilience and the unyielding love that defined our family. The scars remained, both physical and emotional but they served as a reminder of our shared journey and the strength we discovered within ourselves. We vote never to forget the lessons learned, to cherish the bonds we held dear, and to move forward with hope and a renewed sense of purpose. The betrayal of my mother-in-law and the subsequent pursuit of justice forever changed our lives. But amidst pain and turmoil, we found redemption and the power to rebuild. Our family emerged from the darkness stronger than ever, ready to face the future with open hearts and unwavering determination.